Hey, it's Brian with the Health Story Project, and in this video I'm going to be discussing blood work and what the numbers may really mean. During my initial experiments, I did single food sources for four weeks in a row. I did potatoes, then eggs, then bananas, then beef. One of the numbers that stood out was fats and glucose, because when I ate nothing but carbohydrates, my fats and glucose decreased, and when I ate zero carbohydrates, my fats and glucose actually increased. Now, this contradicts a lot of theories, or a lot of modern theories, on what causes fats and glucose to rise, and what causes type 2 diabetes. Most theories say the more carbohydrates you eat, the higher glycemic index they are, uh, the more it's going to cause your fasting glucose to rise and uh, you know, therefore lead to uh, type 2 diabetes. And of course these results were the opposite. I did a little math and it actually turned out that low glycemic meals impact your fasting glucose more. Uh, after about 3-4 hours of eating a low glycemic meal, your blood sugar is still elevated. Now, you eat five, six meals a day. This means that during the entire day, your blood sugar will be constantly elevated. And of course, that is what actually contributes to uh, insulin resistance. So, a high glycemic meal, although it has a spike, after three, four hours, your blood sugar is actually lower than when it started. And I started thinking about, you know, perhaps this is similar to uh, decreasing your resting heart rate. You know, if you want to decrease your resting heart rate, you have to exercise cardiovascularly and intensely, which causes your heart rate to spike, causes it to rise dramatically. And it's just after this exercise, it be starts becoming more efficient and uh, your resting heart rate starts decreasing. So I figured that uh, this, uh, your, your insulin response and fasting glucose levels might, might be similar uh, to this. Uh, and you might actually become more efficient if you eat higher, uh, you know, good quality uh, carbohydrate meals. So I still didn't have an explanation though for why my fasting glucose increased when I didn't eat carbohydrates. In my cholesterol experiments, one of the last things I did was a week-long water fast. Now, in this fast, I found that my cholesterol rose 70 milligrams per DL, which is actually a little surprising. However, after doing a little research, I found that this is something that's uh, been observed time and time again. Uh, your Cholesterol rises because your body's mobilizing fat. Essentially, your body's starving, it's going into ketosis, which I was, and uh, so your body's mobilizing fat, and therefore, you're, uh, if you get a cholesterol test, uh, you're gonna have uh, an elevated cholesterol. So, in this sense, I started thinking of cholesterol as you know, potentially a number that's just reflective of what's being transported in your blood, and not some long-term number. I mean, I saw plenty of evidence that cholesterol was not a you know, a uh, long-term, you know, health indicator, and it was really more reflective of what your diet's been over the last two to four weeks. But if your blood work is really reflective of, you know, just what it's transporting uh, in your bloodstream, what it needs, what you're eating, and, and not some, uh, not some overall, you know, big health risk indicator, it makes sense. Looking back to fasting glucose, if I ate zero carbohydrates, that means my body's going to have to manufacture glucose, it can't just get it from my diet, and it's got to transport it through my blood to the rest of my body. So that would explain that. So I think that we put a lot of emphasis uh, improperly on blood work numbers. You know, I know there is a high correlation between some of these numbers and health risks, but when you take cholesterol, for example, it makes sense. Uh, most bad foods are actually high in saturated fat and cholesterol. You know, desserts, fried foods, fast foods, um, all have a lot of saturated fat and cholesterol comparatively to other foods. Uh, so if your, your average person who's, who's eating these foods is going to have an elevated, uh, elevated cholesterol level. But it's not necessarily true. That's why it's a correlation, not causation. Take me, for example. If you're eating, you know, raw eggs and raw beef and raw milk, things that are high in fat and cholesterol, but very healthy for you, you know, I don't think it's very accurate to say that my high cholesterol levels when eating diets, uh, you know, is going to be reflective of, of bad health or a uh, negative impact to my health. So think about that. Think about what your blood work numbers really mean. Hope you found this interesting, and until next time.